when you talk about the blood supply when you talk about the blood supply the blood supply is simple it's simple simple arterial and venous arterial and venous if you talk about the venous we have superior thyroid vein middle thyroid vein middle thyroid vein and then we have inferior thyroid vein inferior thyroid vein if you talk about arterial we have the superior thyroid artery and the inferior thyroid artery in some cases yes in some cases 1 to 2 percent of cases there may be a direct branch from aorta and what is that known as thyroid ema so thyroidia ema or thyroid ema there are two terms for this thyroid ema is a direct branch from aorta now why i am discussing this arterial supply because i want to discuss some important anatomical relations they are very 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 important let us see them so let us take this to be a thyroid so we have common carotid we have common carotid giving rise to internal and external external this is common carotid artery external will give one branch which is known as superior thyroid artery superior thyroid artery has two divisions has two divisions one will travel along the anterior border yes and one will travel along the posterior border so this is how the things are now then you talk about the thyro cervical tongue the thyro cervical trunk so the thyro cervical trunk is giving rise to what inferior thyroid artery inferior thyroid artery yes at the level of the neck it, it goes up at the level of the neck near the scalenius muscles it takes a right angle so this is inferior thyroid artery it takes a right angle and then it goes behind the common carotid it goes behind the common carotid so it is going behind the common carotid and then it comes out yes and then you know it will give again two branches one is the superior branch and one is the inferior branch of inferior thyroid artery do you know inferior branch is not a single branch but there are multiple multiple numerous branches coming out and draining this part yes and one more important point is that this is the branch which is giving the supply to what parathyroids also parathyroids also so one point is clear that you cannot ligate the inferior thyroid away you have to ligate it as close as to the gland there are lot many students who have confused sir where to ligate superior where to ligate inferior remember remember a rule in life mind your own business stay as close to the gland you will never damage any structure like when we do cholecystectomy in a laparoscopic cholecystectomy you always have a fear of damaging the cbd cbd like in my life i have done somewhere around uh, not lying i must have done around 5000 lap coles 5000 lap coles and maybe one or two cases of uh, cbd injury will be there but they happen just because it might be related with the uh, mirzi syndrome etc or no so try to understand what is my idea of doing a lap cholecystectomy my idea of doing lap cholecystectomy dissect a posterior window first stay away from the liver and hepatobiliary communications now you have only the gall bladder with you you play with it you damage it but you will not damage any crucial structure similarly don't locate the structures which might be injured stay away from them if you talk about recurrent laryngeal nerve there is a dictum don't don't even go near that stay as close to the gland as possible remember that you are not injuring any structure other than the required structures which are to be ligated you will never damage the recurrent laryngeal nerve also now try to see try to see what is important relation here now from below the recurrent laryngeal nerve is coming and it is it is now going posteriorly and now it will be going and entering inside the what yes it, it will be entering inside the larynx like this yes or no so if you see i'll just i'll just make one correction here so this is like this okay if you see there is a small triangle here can you appreciate a small triangle what is this triangle all about on one side this triangle is bound by common carotid on one side this triangle is bound by yes this is bound by your inferior thyroid 
on one side it is the recurrent laryngeal nerve recurrent laryngeal nerve which is going like this and this triangle is known as the famous biard's triangle biard's triangle what is the significance of biard's triangle no dissection is to be done here so this is common carotid artery inferior thyroid artery and recurrent laryngeal nerve any dissection done in this part is going to damage the recurrent laryngeal nerve so this anatomy is very important so stay as close to the gland don't go near this anatomy don't go near the uh, intersection of common carotid and uh, inferior thyroid artery and start tracing for the recurrent laryngeal nerve you will definitely damage it yes you will definitely damage it so the take is the important point is ligation of superior thyroid pedicle superior thyroid pedicle plus inferior thyroid pedicle inferior thyroid pedicle should be done as close to the gland inferior thyroid pedicle should be done close to the gland one again very important very important thing is ligation of inferior thyroid pedicle should be done only after you locate the recurrent laryngeal nerve if you don't locate if you are not able to locate this what is the most important landmark where you will definitely locate this yes it is tubercle of zucker candle so remember very important is this is also been asked most important landmark for recurrent laryngeal nerve for recurrent laryngeal nerve answer is tubercle of zucker candle tubercle of zucker candle zucker candle this is the lateral most lateral most part of the gland so it's a lateral most part of the gland and you will always find you will always find recurrent laryngeal nerve in association with this tubercle next is when i have initiated the talk on recurrent laryngeal nerve i should be talking on recurrent laryngeal nerve what is this concept of recurrent laryngeal nerve now there are two nerves superior vagal branch and inferior vagal branch superior vagal branch will give you external and internal laryngeal nerve an inferior vagal branch should go to the to the larynx yes but what happens when it is going down when it is going down yes this is the scenario this is the arch of aorta this is the arch of aorta so what happens these branches these branches they take a u turn they take a u turn around this they take a u turn around this and they ascend up in the neck yes they ascend up in the neck and this is the reason why they are known as recurrent so why they are known as recurrent because they go down and retrace their path up towards the neck so on the left side if you talk about on the left side they arch around the arch of aorta arch of aorta on the right side it is the right subclavian it's the right subclavian yes or no so we have the right subclavian this is the right subclavian the right subclavian artery and this is the place where the where the right side branch will take a u turn yes or no so left takes around the arch of aorta right branch takes around the right subclavian artery and then they move up into the tracheoesophageal groove yes now try to understand one very important what if they don't retrace the path this is what is known as non recurrent non recurrent laryngeal nerve what proportion of people do you see 0.5 to 1 percent people are associated with non recurrent laryngeal nerve and this is a big challenge you are not able to locate it it might be a non recurrent nerve and you might damage it when removing the what thyroid so when can you see so right sided right sided is more common than left first of all right sided non recurrence is more common than left point number 1 the second is what are the associations what are the associations it can be associated with point number 1 situs inversus situs inversus it could be associated with situs inversus point number 1 second is second is it could be associated with arteria lusoria arteria lusoria let us talk about this concept of arteria lusoria also let us talk about this concept of arteria lusoria arteria lusoria arteria lusoria is abnormal right subclavian artery it is abnormal it is abnormal 
right subclavian artery what is what is the abnormality in this it's a abnormal right subclavian artery arising from arising from generally it is right you can say innominate which will give rise to right common carotid and this right subclavian so this is arising from either the descending outer either the descending outer or it may be arising from or it may be arising from left subclavian artery or left subclavian artery now what is the problem i'll show this to you i'll show this to you the problem is very important so this is the this is the scenario that you are having this is the right innominate right in this case it's a right common carotid artery this is a left common carotid artery yes left common carotid artery and then this is a left subclavian artery left subclavian artery now all of a sudden you realize or body realizes that there is nothing like right subclavian and right subclavian is crying that no 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 i also want to go to my own places and that so okay body says now we don't have a scope you can arise from the descending outer so this is aberrant right subclavian artery this is aberrant right subclavian artery now you have made it now how it will go to the right side because it's on the left side now you don't have any space left outer is in the middle thoracic cage and behind that you have posterior thoracic cavity and even posterior thoracic cavity posterior thoracic cavity is occupied why because there is esophagus here yes or no there is esophagus so now the only path left for this is a path between which is what pre vertebral pre vertebral space yes pre vertebral space so these are the thoracic vertebra and this is the pre vertebral space so what happens this right subclavian artery decides to go by this pre vertebral space by this pre vertebral space can you see it is forming a ring like structure around the esophagus now what is the problem this is what is known as arteria lusoria arteria lusoria now try to understand why this is problem this is a right subclavian and right sub being a right subclavian it will always have pulsations yes or no the pulsations of this the pulsation of this vessel will always cause a posterior indentation can you see the pulsations the pulsations will cause posterior indentation on the yes esophagus and that is why it will cause intermittent dysphagia to this patient and hence this is known as dysphagia lusoria so what is the concept of dys dysphagia lusoria it is the posterior indentation posterior indentation posterior indentation yes on the esophagus on the esophagus this is what is known as this is known as dysphagia lusoria dysphagia lusoria are you getting all these things this is very simple and straightforward so either it could be invert it could be a case of situs inversus where you don't get to see recurrent laryngeal nerve or in case of arteria lusoria in miscellaneous i'll discuss something about the superior thyroid artery and vein and their relation with the external laryngeal so let us talk about this now